Hello nerds, welcome to another video. It's day 9 of Bookmas already and today we're gonna do a um, different video. This is totally... this video is here only because of Rosie. It's her idea. It is a painful idea. She said it would be fun, but she probably meant for her, not for me. Because she made me only choose 10 books I could keep. Which, if I could only keep 10 books, which book would it be? And that's a very hard question. <laughs> and it depends on a lot of things. But I did not get the per uh, parameter. So she did not give me any circumstances. Just if you can only keep 10 books, which ones would you choose? But it depends. Is there a fire in my house and I can only keep 10 books? Get 10 books out and, you know... Can I buy the rest back later? Or do I have, for some magical reason, only have space for 10 books the rest of my life? Which would those be? Because you get very different lists in those situations. And I did not know which one. For what? <laughs> you know, can I buy other books back? Can I listen to audiobooks after those 10 books or what? I have no clue, so that made it even harder for me. Rosie said it would be fun, but not for me. It was not fun to choose only 10 books I would keep. So I did a mix of kind of both situations. Some on these lists are here for sentimental value. Some on these lists are here because they're pretty. So, <laughs> um. I just picked 10 of my favorite books or my prettiest books because I did not know what to do else. <laughs> it's hard. It's very hard. Um, they're in no particular order. These are just the 10 books. I would like to keep the most, but <laughs> I do not want to lose the rest of the books on my shelf. So. Here we go. <laughs> um, I would love, love to keep the Polar Bear Explorers Club by Alex Bell. This is the first book in a series. Um, this is the first book ever I tried to tap, but I got distracted. So I didn't do it, but um, there are very many good quotes in this book. It's absolutely a lovely, wholesome book. It makes me feel happy all the time and I don't reread books, so it's hard. If I can only read the, those 10 books, it would be very hard because I don't really reread. But I would like to reread this sometimes. I think I would love it if I did. So there, there might be a time I would love to reread this. Um, Felix is the best character in this book. I absolutely love it. So I would not. I can't tell, you know, I cannot leave this behind. I need to have this book. So it's on my list. Then this book is here for a whole different reason, but it's also sentimental value because this is the first thriller slash horror book that made me feel anxious. And I think that says something. It's just like Home with Sarah Gailey. I absolutely love this book. It is, as I said, the first book that really made me feel eerie and anxious about it in a good way. So I think it deserves a spot on the list for accomplishing that as the first book ever. Um, Asylum was also almost on this list for that reason, but it wasn't as eerie as this one. And I already had 10 books and I could not 
put the 11 in because that would define the purpose. Fun, she said. It's not fun. <laughs> um, then we got a whole bunch of books in here that basically are here because they're my favorite middle grade series ever and I would not survive pairing with them. I could I could not I could not let them go. Um but I could only get one book from every series. Because otherwise it would be more than ten and I still have other books to go. So I got the first book in the Hunting of Evelyn Jones series by Phil Hikes. I love this series so much. So far the first is still my favorite. But I only read the second the first two. Um so I picked up the first because it introduced me to Evelyn Jones and I love that. Um, I could not part with this. I could also not part with Starfall. Um, I don't own the first book yet. I only got the third and the, se the, the second and the third book. But I think I would take the first Starfall book with me because this series is such wholesome. It's one of my favorite middle grade series ever. It's Mila Moss. Who's cute. She finds a lot of magical friends. Um, it's basically kind of Wizard of Oz. Middle grade. Magical. Modern. And I love it. And I could not bark with it either. Would you think about leaving Osman behind? Would you do that? No, you won't. He'd probably blow you up if you did, but you know. So we have to take it with us. And then that's the same reason I got Pages and Co, Matilda, and the Book Wanderers. Tilly and the Book Wanderers. It's Tilly in the, the English. I love this book. It's one of my favorite middle grade series. I love the first book the most because it has a lot of Alice in Wonderland in it. This is an ode to book lovers. Very atmospheric, very fairy tale esque slash classics. It's cute, it's wholesome, and it's one of my favorites. So I need to take this. This is not, it's not nice. Um, I also had to take Gozer with me. It's from Peter Kolwijk. It's a Dutch book. Um, it's a children's book about the um, mental health care. This is about a boy who has in his world an invisible friend, but everybody else calls it an imaginary friend. And he needs to deal with that because he gets in very dangerous situations of the imaginary friend or the invisible friend. And this was so emotional. I stopped my eyes out. It's a very respectful but very true depiction of the mental health facilities. At least in Holland where I work. <laughs> um, it's, it's, it's incredible. No, 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 I cannot. This is my favorite book of all time. I normally don't say that because it's Dutch and a lot of you can't read Dutch and it's not translated yet, but this is my favorite book of all time. So I have to take it with me. I would cry if I need to leave it behind and I cannot rebuy it again because this I will reread. I wanted to reread it as soon as I finished it. Um, but I'm waiting for the third book to come out. And then I'm going to read them all again. And it's going to be amazing. Then my English all-time favorite is The Tango of Spells by Michelle Harrison. So I had to take this with me. You cannot leave Charlie behind. She's the cutest, baddest character there is. I love these sisters. I love this magical story. This is 
the third book in the series, but I like this one the best because it has gingerbread witch vibes. And you know, love it. Then I have to take Heartless by Marissa Meyer. This is my all time favorite YA. This is my favorite Alice in Wonderland retelling. Alice in Wonderland retelling is Alice in Wonderland is my favorite story. This was this was the first book ever I cried from. I before this book I'd never cried in a book or read a book or from a book. Or, I never made a book me a book had never made me cry before. So you know that say something and I have to take it with me. Because of that. Of course, I have to take my favorite story of all time. I'm gonna take this edition of Alice in Wonderland because this is the prettiest I have. It's not the most readable, but it's the prettiest. This is also the first book ever I bought. Or not ever, but as a grown up. I bought this book before I started reading because it was so pretty. I loved it so much and I love Alice in Wonderland and I wanted to read it because it was so pretty. So it holds a lot of sentimental value and this is the first book I bought. It's the story I love the most. It's the prettiest edition I have in all my shelves. It's pink. I love pink. <laughs> It's a letter bound. It has end paper. It's so gorgeous. It's illustrators. With the original illustrations. And this has all. Um, everything to do with Alice in Wonderland. That Lewis Carroll wrote in it. So you know. it's I can read everything from Alice in this. So it's a sensible thing to do. But also it's the prettiest edition. But also it's the first book I ever bought. As an adult, so we can't leave that, and that leaves me only one more book to take with me. And there are so many others I would like to take with me. I had to leave the trains to impossible places behind, which sucks. I could not take the Splintered series with me, I could not take the Asylum series with me. No small spaces or any the whole anything of that series because I got only 10 books but I, my favorite classic of all time and I kind of obsessed with the story is Frankenstein by Mary Shelley so I got this pretty edition because this is the prettiest edition I have from Frankenstein there is one from Blossom Books that's way more readable than this and it's still really, really pretty. But this has more stories of Mary Shelley in it. And I, I, if I can only read from those 10 books, I want to have stories I don't read yet. And I, I, I need to read more from Mary Shelley. I cannot just read only Frankenstein the rest of my life. I feel like I really miss out if I do not read her other stuff. And it might not be as good as Frankenstein. I get that, but... I love Frankenstein, so I would like to read more from her. Like, you know, that's normal, right? Um, and this is the prettiest. It has more stories. It's and papers. It's just stunning. So I I need to take it. And these were all the ten books that I would take with me if I can only have 10 books but I hope it never comes to that I hope I can have 10 bookcases that makes it a lot easier um Rosie I hope you enjoyed this video I hope you like my choices um I kind of feel like you need to put down in the comments what you would take um I hope everybody else loved seeing this as well Please let me know. No, don't let me know which book you would take. Because 
I'm getting, gonna regret taking only these books and I'm gonna rethink about it. <laughs> We're not going that lane. Um, just leave a like if you like this video. <laughs> if you have more ideas for me that I, that you would like to see, please leave those down below, like Rosie did. Um, and I'll see you tomorrow. Until then, stay kind of friendly. Bye, love. Thank you.